Uh, okay, I want to introduce my graduate student, uh, Winnie Wu. She's originally from uh, Lily Young. I, I was getting her for a hard time. I said, I used to know a guy named Lily Young. <laughs> <laughs> but Lily Young uh, in the Hunan province of China. Uh, she got her bachelor's degree in science and agronomy from Hunan Agricultural University in 2017. And while she's an undergraduate, she had the opportunity to uh, study for six months in England at the Royal Agriculture University. It sounds pretty sophisticated. Uh, so anyway, uh, when she got here, I stuck Winnie on this project because uh, we wanted. To, is there any way to use these, the UAVs that's going to help us? in a cotton breeding program to help make some of our most basic binary decisions. Do we, do we keep this line or do we not keep this line? And so uh, Winnie's done a really good job with this uh, with this project and she's answered a lot of fundamental questions and, and made me rethink you know my selection criteria with the cotton breeding program. Mm -hmm. I have been looking at the wrong stuff. I think it's okay. so, anyway, I'll turn it over to Winnie. Thank you. Thank you for your introduction, Dr. Hay. Uh, I'm very happy today to share a part of my thesis work with you all. Uh, my project is high throughput phenotyping that improves the efficiency of a cotton plant breeding system. Uh, first, we need to discuss the background of our first objective. We know cotton is the world's leading natural textile fiber and oil seed crops. So, considerable breeding efforts are made to improve this crop, and the breeding programs which enhance the efficiency of growing this crop are important to the variability of cotton industries. For UAV, the uh, M&A aerial vehicles, they play an important role in, in agricultural research because they facilitate the high throughput phenotyping. Also, recent advances in M&A aerial vehicles and sensor technologies are making it possible to accurately assess overall plant growth and health status uh, with fine spatial and high temporal resolutions at a relatively low cost. Among different, among, different, among different phenotypes, plant type is an important phenotypic trait, which can be used as an indicator of overall plant growth. Um, but manual measurement is not suitable for a large field because it's time consuming, label intensive, and may introduce a level of subjectivity. In terms of yield prediction, it's commonly conducted by counting both which is also tedious and time-consuming. Uh, also, such estimations was based on farmers' experience and visual inspection without, sign basic, without scientific basis. So, the ability of UAV uh, to identify plant height and cotton both can serve as an important tool in predicting plant growth and yield. Uh, therefore, our first objective is to evaluate the ability of UAVs to predict plant height and yield. Our hypothesis is UAV can accurately predict plant height and yield. To test this hypothesis, we need accurate data processed from UAV. However, precession farming has created a critical need for spatial data on row spacing. When cotton planted in soil rows, um, the sensors mounted on the UAV uh, cannot, the canopy cover may prevent the sensor from measuring plant architecture and volo three-dimensionally. In order to capture a more accurate 3D image, uh, uh, the sensors mounted on the UAV should have the access to the view of the ground. Um, an, alternative, uh, an alternative planting pattern, Skipro, may solve this problem. Skipro pattern uh, is to Plant one row, then skip one row. That empty row can provide ground elevation and decrease the possibility of uh, overlapping canopy covers, which means the skip row may increase the UAV data accuracy. So our, sec our second objective is to compare the accuracy of plant height and yield prediction from skip row patterns versus solid row patterns. Hypothesis is yield and plant estimations will be improved when cotton is planted in skip row patterns. Then we have a question. How does skip row affect the evaluation of cotton progeny rows if skip row really can increase the estimation's accuracy? So our last objective is to characterize genotype by row patterns interaction and how location year affects that interaction. Our hypothesis is Row spacing has no effect on link yield or fiber quality. 
The experiment was established at Westlaco, Corpus Christi, and College Station in 2017-2018. The trial design is the split plot design. Row spacing is the main treatment. Genotype is the sub-treatment. Five different genotypes were planted in skip row and solid row pattern, each replicated four times. At mid-season, they cut harvested with a mechanical plot picker harvester. And the 30 ball samples used to estimate the percent and a fiber treat were measured using HVI. Uh, for data collection, we fly the UAV by weekly basis to estimate canopy height, canopy cover, canopy, uh, canopy volume, and vegetation index. <coughs> at the same time, we measure the ground truth data, plant height, and bow count at a college station and Corpus Christi. To collect RGB, to collect RGB data, DJI uh, Phantom 4 Pro is equipped with 20 MP gimbal stabilized sensor and the flying attitude is 30 meter. For multi-spectral data collection, Flantrace 3P was integrated with DJI Matrix 100 platform and the flying height is 50 meter. A total of nine ground control points were installed and their precise location were surveyed using GPS for future georeferencing. The raw images were processed using any soft photo scan structure from motion to generate geospatial data products, such as also mosaic image digital surface model and 3D point cloud. Structure from, structure from motion is an emerging method which can reconstruct a 3D structure from, or from a series of overlapping 2D images. This graph sh uh, shows the 3D point cloud and different view of the plants. This chart shows the main steps we use to generate the data. After we get our uh, geospatial data products, for example, if we can get 3D point cloud image, we can build a plant height model. Based on this model, we can extract the maximum canopy height, average canopy, average canopy height, and canopy volume. The same for uh, also mosaic image. Uh, if we can got this image, uh, we can use formula to calculate normalized difference, vegetation index, excessive grain, and canopy cover. Also, at late season, we can run binary classification to extract cotton balls to get cotton ball and cotton ball area data. The first step to generate data is to build a plot boundary and a grid structure. In this study, all the field was divided into columns, rows, and grids. Uh, we can see uh, the row one was divided into different columns, and each column has 10 grids with the same size. Um, all the data generated from structure, from structure, uh, from structure, uh, all the data generated from structure from motion uh, were converted into grid-wise measurement, because in this way we can avoid weight influence. Uh, the second step is to build a plant height model. Plant height model was generated by subtracting digital C data elevation model from digital surface model. After we get this model, we can calculate the maximum plant height and the mean plant height for each grade. The, the second step is to build a cotton ball model. In this step, we have three parts. The first part is cotton ball candidate selection. This table shows all the parameters we use to select cotton ball candidate. Random seed points were extracted and the region growing algor algorithm were applied by using hierarchical random set, uh, sampling to determine if the generated segment are cotton ball candidate or not. We applied 10 iterations and each iteration extracted 0.1% pixels on each subset image. Once the segment located in non-target areas such as soils and alleys, it will be marked out for the rest of the iterations. In terms of region growing algorithm, it starts from an initial seed and search and search neighboring pixels uh, in horizontal, vertical, and diagonal directions based on spectral similarity. The similarity threshold uh, values that are 10% of the maximum and the difference between the maximum and the minimum of the pixel values for all bands in mix. If the segment size bigger than 9 meters square, it will be marked as masking area. 
the two rest of the iterations. For cotton ball candidates, the size uh, reached from 9 cm square to 225 uh, meters centimeter square, and the run is index higher than 0.7. If the segment is smaller than 9 cm square, it will be regarded as speckled noise and were discarded. After we selected cotton ball candidate, we can do the second part, cotton ball extraction. Because we have, uh, because the spectral information of all cotton ball candidates were collected, and the brightness threshold value will be automatically de determined by using Outsu method to separate the cotton balls from other classes. Outsu method is used to differentiate, uh, to determine a threshold when you want to separate the two, di two dominant distributions. Then we get the threshold. We can use that threshold to uh, uh, to display binary classification. In, uh, in this case, we can extract cotton balls. The last part is patch set analysis. As the last part, we can uh, calculate the, the total number of cotton balls and a cotton ball areas for each grid. The first graph shows the RGB image. Uh, the left four rows. Uh, solid rows, the right three rows are uh, steep rows. After running the bow extraction algorithm, we can see the binary classification. The last photo shows the after extracting the individual bow, cotton balls, magenta points represent individual balls. At last, we have many biweekly data, which include maximum plant height, mean plant height, NDVI, excessive grain, cannot be covered from, uh, from RGB sensor, Canopy cover from multispectral sensor and canopy volume. Also, we have bow count and bow area data just before harvest. Now, let's move on to result part. For our first objective, we want to uh, ask, uh, evaluate UAV stability to predict plant height and yield. This graph shows the correlation between UAV based plant height and the manual ground measurement for plant height. The x axis is manual ground measure is ma uh, manual ground measurement and y axis is UAV based plant height. We can see the UAV based maximum plant height and UAV based mean plant height. Both of them shows a pretty good correlation with actual plant height. Uh, for yield prediction, this graph shows the correlation between UAV based ball count measurement and the yield per row at Corpus Christi and Corpus Station. The x axis is UAV ball count, y axis is seed cotton yield per row. Uh, the R square for colorization and corpus Christi are 0.5 and 0.68. Figure 3 shows the correlation between UAV based ball area measurement and the yield per row at both locations. Uh, we can see the R square are 0.41 and 0.68 for color stage and corpus Christi. Also, correlation analysis was performed between yield and all the UAV data, which includes canopy cover, canopy volume, canopy height, and vegetation indices. This graph shows the correlation comparison between UAV data and yield throughout the whole growing season at college station irrigated trial. The x axis is the date, y axis is the R square. But I have to mention because of plant launching and late harvesting, uh, yield is highly affected by the influence, uh, so the which probably result in this poor correlation at college station. The same for dryland trial at a college station. Uh, this uh, this figure shows the correlation comparison at Corpus Christi. Uh, we can see the maximum canopy height, the blue line, and the canopy cover from multispectral sensor, the the purple one and the green line, which represent the canopy volume, they are more predictive of yield during mid-growing season. Uh, in the late season, uh, UAV-based bowl area and the UAV-based bowl count, they are more predictive of yield. To take full advantage of UAV data, we run a stepwise to find best yield predictors combination to maximum prediction accuracy. Uh, the first model we got, the R square is 0 0.9074, and in this model we have six parameters, but two of them are not significant. After removing these two non significant parameters, we got our second uh, model. The R square is 0 0.8632, and in this model, 
the four par uh, it has four parameters, but one of them is not significant. After removing that signif unsignificant parameter, we got our third model. The R square is point eight five four, and in this model, all of the three parameters are significant. So, which means breeders can choose any of these three models to accurately breed to accurately predict yields based which based on their availability of time, money, and a research purpose. For example, if they have enough, if, if they want the most accurate uh, yield prediction, they can choose the first model, which needs five flights and the two different sensors. If they don't have enough time and the money, uh, they can choose the third model, uh, which only needs three flights and only need RGB sensor. Also, if they want to predict yield as soon as possible, they can, I highly recommend they use canopy cover from metal spectral sensor because this parameter is very stable during mid growing season and they, only, they can only fly once, do, uh, once between four true leaf stages and five nodes above one four hour stage to accurately predict plant, plant yield. Based on all the tables and graphs we showed before, we can see UAV have the ability to predict plant height and yield. For our second objective, we want to compare the UAV data accuracy from different row, row patterns. This graph shows the relationship between UAV-based plant height from different planting patterns and manual ground measurement. The x-axis is manual ground measurement, y-axis is UAV-based plant height. We can see the, the data from Skipro shows better correlation uh, with actual plant height than soil rows. For the yield prediction, this graph, uh, this graph shows the correlation between UAV based bulk count from different planting patterns and the yield per row at College Station and Corpus Christi. Those blue dots represent the data from Skipro, red dots represent the data from soil row. We can see the Skipro data shows better correlation with actual yield than soil rows. The same for UAV based bulk area yield prediction. Uh, the data, the data from Skipro uh, performed better than solid rows. In addition, we separate uh, different row patterns data to run model one. Apparently, uh, Skipro patterns have a higher R square than solid row patterns. The same for model two and model three. So we can see uh, yield and plant height estimations was improved when cotton was planted in Skipro patterns. Furthermore, we want to investigate if the UAV prediction benefit outweighs any obfuscation of data caused by skip row versus solid row. We run a variety by row pattern interaction analysis of variance. In this table, we can see lint yield only significant in college station at 20, uh, at college station in, 20, in 2017. It's, pro uh, it's probably influenced by the hurricane Harvey. And then for the fiber trees, uh, although these three are significant, even if this three is significant due to lack of significance, uh, due to lack of significance throughout other study areas, we can see fiber trees are less likely affected by this interaction. Based on this table, we can have the result under normal conditions, interactions are minimal. Reading Progress is likely not affected by row spacing. Uh, based on all the results we mentioned before, we can conclude to take full advantage of UAV data, cotton breeding programs needed to plant early generation lines in skip rows, and this can be done without compromising the efficiency and accuracy of breeding programs. At last, I want to thank my committee members, Dr. Haig, Dr. Smith, Dr. Thompson, and Dr. Mayada and all the students in Cunning uh, kind of Improvement Lab, they helped me a lot uh, for my lab and study. And also the Corpus Christi group, they helped me a lot for this project and I kind of incorporated. Thank you, you for your time and attention. And um, you are welcome to ask any questions. <laughs> individual uh, cotton balls. Yes, so remember you're uh, talking about you use the size of the, like the batch size? Yes. 
That's fine. So when you're like working with um, object oriented <coughs> classification there, different uh, metrics that you can use, uh, for example, the perimeter or the, the shape or relation to ratio of radar yes. in area. I'd like to know why did you choose uh, patch and how did you come with like a threshold to identify if this is cottonball or what it's not? Like for uh, for cannonball extraction, it has many problems at the first because uh, cannonball candidates can be wrongly classified uh, because the cannonball doesn't have enough contra contrast with the uh, background. So we applied many filter and also the bare white soil may be wrongly classified as cannonballs. So that's why we want to restrain the size of the cotton. Because the soil is like a string type, that's why we want to. So only from the size you were able to? We um, were able to differentiate cotton balls and the uh, bare white soil. Thank you. Yes. So why did you choose two sensors to, uh, to detect the kind of cover? Uh, from, from this formula we can see uh, because at at late season the the plant leaves tend to uh, change the color from green to yellow, but if we use uh, canopy cover from uh, from RGB sensor, it will lose the ability. But for multispectral sensor, it still work, although it's changed color because uh, this parameter is more stable and more robust o over different growing stages. That's why we choose two sensors to measure canopy cover. So why not just use one? Uh, because it's like a double check. Yeah. Yes, Jake. So do you personally think that the cost of flying you know, UAV and the skip row patterns is worth what you're seeing out there in the field in terms of your correlation and stuff like that, or is it still more beneficial to plant like a solid row and have people go in there and like, like a manual count? Like this project is not means we want to replace, we want to use UAV replace the breeders. It's not with this uh, project. We just want to help breeders to make a more efficient and accurate uh, selection, progeny row selection. Yeah, and the expense, I I think for the long run, yes. Two questions for you. So for your multi spectral camera, how many bands do you use? Three. Oh, on three? Yes. For multi-spectral, okay. Uh, second question, I suppose, I think it's your first result tonight. Your UAV uh, height, and then this one, will, you have two slopes here. One yeah, because we use the two different parameters to predict plant height. Which one is UAV based on maximum plant height, and one is UAV based on mean plant height. We want to try which one has which one has higher correlation with actual plant height. Because in the field, it may influence by the wind, or if the plant height is really high, it may slightly tilt. So that's why we want to use these two parameters to compare which one is more accurate. So this is correlation is excellent for me. It's quite a surprise to me as well. So correlations are, 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 are useful and good, but um, especially on small experiments, they can be a little bit biased. Did you do any cross-validation to see if your actually prediction accuracy is how that actually applies to unknown samples? Uh, this is only one year data. So we, but we checked the in-college data and the Corpus Christi, these two locations. Okay, so cross-validation just involves taking your full set of observations, removing, let's say, a third of them, developing your model on the two-thirds, and then predicting the third that you didn't include in your model development. Okay. So something like that might give you a more realistic estimate because especially when you have so many parameters and you have a, a fairly you know moderate sized data set, you can overestimate your ability to predict for next year when Dr. Haig is going to try and apply this. Yes, that those can be all of our future research, right? You have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can do it with your existing Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. It's that should be included in Yes, yeah, I appreciate that. That's a good idea. We'll look into that. Uh, so I have a, a, a 
question, uh, just an opinion to ask. Your opinion on this. So, do you think that when a cotton breeder is planning out their early progeny trials, that you're going to convince them that doubling their area is going to be uh, you're going to be able to compensate for that by using the UAB. Because you're going to have to use twice the amount of land to value the same number of individuals. So do you think you're going to be able to convince people to do the skip row, or do you think that the results of should you should start like, you know, it's a good idea, but if you don't have the room, should we, can we still rely on the non-skip rooms, right? Right. Is, like, is your every row going to work still? Uh, if they use this approach, if they use UAV, they don't need to vi vi physically go to the field and make selections. They can only solely uh, <coughs> read in front of the uh, computer and store those images. And uh, those data can quantify your uh, your progenero's performance. Why, why not? Because it's more accurate. Right, but you're going to limit, so if you have to double the space, you're limiting the amount of progeny you can evaluate, which is kind of defeating kind of the purpose of the UAV. Things like that. It's just like the, all the trade-offs, right? Well, because what you're going to do is you're going to increase the amount of seed you have per, per plant. And so it's not a one-to-one trade-off. It may be a one-to-one point eight trade-off. Because yeah. you're going to produce a lot more yield on a single yield than you want to Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. That's close. Yeah. I have two questions on the patching. First, the patching, you mentioned the, uh, the predicted plant as the, the year. Yeah. Is it including the fiber and the seed, the both, right? Uh, we use uh, the harvest. Uh, the harvest the year, the year. Is yeah. the seed, is it In including the seed, the seed, seed and the People, fiber? Yeah. Oh, the, the, the fiber and seed. Seed and the fiber. Why not the girls? Uh, should they work for the winter, winter year? This is the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but the lint percent is very high, so it's similar, so it's quite similar, the state cutting yield and the lint yield. Yeah, because the lint percent uh, and uh, you can maybe tell the coloration between the color I, and the lint yield. Yeah, I used uh, lint yield to find the correlation with the cotton ball, uh, the number of cotton ball and the area. It also shows very good correlation. But I think breeders, when they make selection, they also they also see the cotton balls with the seed, right? I want to uh, just be the same when we make selection. I know there's a third thing the question that uh, so you did the uh, prediction here. It's a, a certainly directly the correlation here, but for the plant uh, genome, it's like a genome selection. Then the way they analyze the same, but they use the cross validation approach again to do the ana analysis. When we do that for the uh, UAV results, cross validation, that's a, a genome selection uh, scale for oh, analysis. Okay. I think that better, you think that's better than this one? This is directed to correlation between measured and the uh, predicted here basically you have predicted and the measure for just late yield? No, the data analysis uh, for UAV data. Here you have the direct correlation measured and the predicted with UAV. But the same thing we have genotype and the old genotype of predicted uh, last year oh, okay. and the also measured. But when we analyze genome, so genome selection, genome selection data, we use the cross validation scheme to analyze the data. I don't know which one better. I think the cross validation data more comfortable compared to directive. Now, certainly, this is pretty high. You do cross validation, I believe it will be very high proof. But it's more make sense cross validation. Yeah, I guess we need to look into that. That's because all the data like this, we no, no, I never see uh, people doing the cross validation uh, scheme to analyze the data. Yeah. With that, we have no more time. Thanks, everyone.